Well, actually, you know, I thought about what I might write this book about, and I realized I don't want to write about anything I already know, because it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a benefit for my own mind. It wouldn't be fresh. Um, and so I thought, why don't I write about what I don't know? I had a lot of questions about many things, about my teacher, my relationship with my teacher, and um, very deep questions about um, practice and about dharma and about faith and, and doubts and um, beliefs. And I wanted to explore those things. So um, I decided just to ask questions. And I thought that would be beneficial for me. And because it would be such a lively kind of beneficial experience for me, I, I trusted that it would be helpful for other people too. I don't think we're all that different. You know, we have similar questions. Questioning in itself is a very powerful thing I've found. Like my Dharma practice has been much more about questioning than finding, asking questions than finding answers. And um, I find that when I, my, when I ask a question, you know, my mind is quite engaged and yet it hasn't shut down around ideas so it's very open. And in an open question, you know, has to do with um, asking a question but not really expecting to find a static answer. Um, so, you know, in some sense, sometimes an open question can be conceptual asking. Sometimes an open question would just be open to, to learning something new, and it could be non-conceptual. Like sometimes I have a question and I don't know how to answer it conceptually, so I'll just sit quietly and practice. And it feels much more like a supplication than an actual question. So it could just be an openness to understanding something and not even being that clear what it is that you're needing to know. I think a lot of times we enter a path wanting to find answers, wanting to find truths. And the more you study the Dharma, in my experience, the more you find out that things um, don't have kind of a static way of being. You know, you sit and you look at your own mind and you try to examine. You examine, you look for a self, you know, and you realize things are always changing and dynamic and always a work in progress and very much open to interpretation. So what I've learned from just observing my mind, you know, and observing ex my experience is that things are, don't really lend themselves to being known um, in a static kind of way. So therefore, in, in terms of the world of things, there are no, you know, absolute truths, no absolute truths in this kind of relative changing world. And so um, I think this idea of questioning in some sense is very much in accord with the way things are. And to see that things can't be known in any kind of one-dimensional way is kind of an accurate assessment of life. And so we can respond to life or have a functional relationship with life. But the minute we close down around an idea or say, I am like this or he is like that or this is like this, we cut off. I think a lot of our intelligence and our ability to act skillfully in the world.